Good morning, welcome to The Homestead. Today I'm going to talk about eight tools. They are essential for me. I use them here on a daily basis and I really can't live without them. They are all inexpensive with the exception of one and if you are a beginning homesteader, these are the ones you need to get first. Let's talk about what those are. So the first one I'm going to start off with, in my opinion, is number one. And I'm not going to save it for the end. I'm going to tell you what it is right now. And that is five gallon plastic buckets. I've got so many of these things from so many different stores. I honestly have about 50 of them. These used to be cheaper, but I think now they're about $5. They used to be about two, maybe three years ago. But you can pick up some for free from some companies if you can find them. Some people just throw them out. Let me show you all the ways we use them here on our property. This one is full of sawdust. I collect all the sawdust when I use a saw here in the barn because that sawdust is valuable for using on spills, like I spill oil when I am changing the oil in the vehicles or whatever it might be, it is very handy. These over here, you've seen this before. This is my uh, drain or sieve for my grain for my fodder system. If I'm doing a job somewhere on the property, I usually take a bucket full of tools because normally a tool belt is not enough if you're doing a big job. You need something else to transport the tools. And I don't have some fancy toolbox that I can connect to the tractor or, or put on an ATV or whatever. I just use a bucket. It's way easier. This one I leave set outside so it can get washed out. This is the bucket that I use to clean the chicken manure out of the coop. Five gallon buckets are perfect for that. Be careful though, with all of these five gallon buckets, you do not want to leave them in the sun. They are not UV resistant and they will break down and crack. If they're in the sun for say a month, give or take, I know from experience because I've broken a lot of buckets after I've left them in the greenhouse. Now, having just said that, I do have some that do sit outside. Most of these are in the shade and they do last for a decent amount of time. This one right here, is covering a water spigot that comes up out of the ground and this spigot is unprotected. So inside of here I've got some reflective bubble wrap insulation and I use this in the winter time to keep these insulated so they don't crack. Another way I use buckets are for harvesting here in the garden. This is a great tool to just throw in a bunch of potatoes, take them into the house, or just fill with carrots or whatever it is. You don't need some fancy basket. Now I don't just have those big five gallon buckets. I've got some smaller ones as well. You can actually find the two and a half gallons or the two gallons in the paint aisle at your Lowe's or Home Depot. And those are perfect for using for small jobs. Look at this. I've got, actually this is a different type of bucket, but I've got one of those small Lowe's buckets here. This is protecting my extension cord running out to our chicken coop. And this is a great trick. If you wanna run an extension cord outside, you just kind of tie it up and put it on top of a bucket, slip another bucket on top of that, and you've kind of waterproofed it. That's a perfect transition to be able to talk about the next one, extension cords. Extension cords are so handy. Even if you are lucky enough to have electricity run to all of your small little outbuildings, your coops and everything like that, it's still super important you have a lot of extension cords on hand. Here in the barn, I do have a lot of electrical outlets, but I still need those extension cords for reach. And I probably have 15 extension cords, give or take, of varying lengths here on the property. Here's an extension cord I have right now that goes and runs out to the chicken coop. It actually splits off because I have two different things in there that I'm using electricity for, and it splits off at those buckets, so I have two more out there. And then I've got battery tenders on all of my batteries for my tractor, my lawnmower, everything, and extension cords on those. Number three are hoses, and I highly recommend getting a natural, real rubber hose. They last way longer outside than the synthetic poly hoses. I did a video in the past about comparing hoses. You can click on that at the top of the screen. Most of the time the rubber hoses you can find in the store are made by the tire companies. This one is a Continental. I found Goodyear and so on and so forth. And if you're leaving them out in the sun in the garden, they're going to last for years and years and years. I probably have roughly 15 hoses in varying lengths between 25 and 100 feet here on the property. 
I had them in the garden. I had them in the greenhouse. I have them here in the barn. I had them for the chicken coop. I have a ton of them all over the place. Most of us are going to have hoses because we just cannot run water lines everywhere that we are going to need them on the property. The only thing I wish is these companies would bring back the real brass fittings because these alloy ones are awful. Now again, I mentioned I use all of these things on a daily basis. Now I might not be moving an extension cord everywhere on a daily basis, but it is always in use, as are the hoses. So certainly one thing I use multiple times per day, every single day that I'm working out on the property, are gloves. A good pair of leather gloves. And you are going to need multiple pairs of gloves. I've got a few here in the barn, I've got some in the greenhouse, some up by the house, and some in the little garden shed. They are everywhere. And that's because you're doing a lot of work all the time in them, even a thick leather is gonna wear through and wear holes in it. These will help you get better grip on a lot of things that you're picking up. It'll help protect your hands. We have a ton of thorns here on our property. While blackberries, there's some other thorny bushes or vines that I don't even know the names of here, and they are brutal. They're all throughout my brush piles, my wood piles, and some are even climbing up my solar array. And that leads me to the next one. And that is a good pruning saw, but I'm gonna modify this category to say a cutting implement. So you can add in a knife, because I use this about 15 to 20 times a day. I use this probably once a day, but obviously these do different jobs. So I'd say to get one great pruning saw and one great knife, because they will last you a very long time. This is a Silky F100. It's an amazing pruning saw, and it takes out a lot. So in the garden, I have a lot of little trees that grow up around the fencing. You need to get those down and get those out of there, and this is the perfect tool. It's compact, you can keep it on your person at all time while you're working outside. In addition to that, a great pocket knife. This is the Benchmade Bug Out. It's three and a half, I think, or 3.25 inches long. It's made of S30V steel, which is the perfect balance between hardness and I think flexibility. I'm not an expert on knives, but I do know one. So I've done a video in the past with my friend who does testing for Benchmade, and you can click on that at the top of the screen. You can also check out his Instagram down in the description below the video. He's been working with and testing knives for over 25 years, I believe. Now you can use an inexpensive knife. This one is about $120, but it's going to last me for an insanely long period of time. I went through probably five or six inexpensive $25 to $30 knives before this. They all broke, the blades wore out, the blades weren't sharp very often because they wear down so quickly. This one is a completely different story. So it's that balance you've gotta take. You can get an inexpensive one. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. The next one is also one of the ones where you can spend a lot of money or a little bit of money, but I use this tool constantly, almost every single day here on the property. And that is a good drill or impact driver. This one has a Torx bit on it right now. You can switch this out and use it with a socket bit. So you can put your sockets on there. So driving nuts. This is so versatile. I use it constantly because there's always something to repair or build if you're out on your property. This is a good quality tool. However, you can use something middle of the road and is maybe half the price of a DeWalt or a Milwaukee. And you can see this Ryobi is very old. I bought this, I believe in 2005 or 2006. I think it was the summer of 2005. It still works but it just doesn't have the power that this does. So it can't do really the same job, but it is still an amazing backup if I need to drill a hole while I'm driving something else with this. And as long as it works, it's not going anywhere. Now, when you're building and repairing things almost all the time on your property, this is a specific tool for a specific use. And so is this. I recommend getting a really good framing hammer 
because that will allow you to do a lot of little jobs and big jobs. So you can use this, you know, really easy on small nails, but you can also use it to drive, say, a big spike. Having a solid steel one is great, and it is super rugged, and you're not really gonna break it doing many of the jobs that homesteaders do. These can be fairly expensive nowadays, but you can get a wood one if you choose to. Next tool I use on a daily basis is a shovel. You can't get away on a homestead without a really good quality spade headed shovel. Now I've got several other types of shovels. I've got a trenching shovel, I've got a flat shovel, I've got a short handled flat shovel, you know, a whole bunch of shovels. But if you're just starting out, a good wood handled, strong hickory wood handled spade shovel is going to take you a long way. There are so many things to dig up. There are so many holes to dig. There's so many tree stumps to dig out. There are just enormous amount of things you need to do with this shovel. And once you are able to afford more shovels, buy more shovels or buy more handles for your shovel. Although these blades will wear out over time. So as many shovels as you can get, I'd recommend it. And last but not least is a good sprayer. My absolute favorites are the Chapin brands. Now, over the years, I've tried many others, the Solo, the DB Smith, and a bunch of other ones, and they don't compare to the Chapins. I have about 10 sprayers filled with various things. This one, as you can see, I've gotten written on the top here. This is copper. I use this to spray all of my fruit trees so that we can help prevent disease here on the homestead. But I also have some that have things like uh, foliar sprays in them. So I can spray those and get some nutrients onto the foliage of my plants in my garden. And I also have some that has some nasty stuff in it like ant killer, because obviously if you live in Texas, there's ants everywhere and they just invade everything. So you've got to take care of them. What I like about the Chapins, they have a wide opening here at the top. that's easy for the cap to go on and off and for you to be able to fill it. It's got a pressure relief valve and the wands are really great too. As always, we will leave in the description below the video, the links to everything that we use. And like I said, I use all these things. I've tested them out. They're really rugged and they'll last you a long time, even if you're using them on a daily basis. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which talks about nine essential home setting skills that you need to develop right now. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.